So the Next.js 14 app router makes page transitions pretty tricky with a lot of animation frameworks out there, especially when you want things like exit animations. And even though there are solutions, they aren't particularly flexible in my opinion. So instead of using something like frame or motion, which is what I would normally use, today we're going to extend the Next.js link component directly so that we can make any animations that we want without needing to wrestle any frameworks. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. So I've already set up a pretty bare bones Next.js project here. All that I have is a couple of pages. So this basic page that you start with whenever you create your project, as well as four other ones. Each of these pages just essentially has you know, some basic content in them, a main tag with an H1. And you can see that over here on the side. And then I've also got a basic little nav bar here, which you can see rendered up at the top, which just takes us between each of these pages. This nav bar, by the way, is a super stripped down version of an animated nav bar that I have on my website. You can check down the link below, but if you're interested in stuff like what we're going over in this video, I run a website called hover.dev where you can find a whole bunch of different animations and interactions for React, Tailwind CSS, and Frame Remotion. But for this example, not to make anything too complicated, we're just gonna stick with this basic little nav bar. Now, before we actually start writing any code, I just want to think about conceptually what we're actually going to do here. So in our nav bar component, we'll see that we have all of these little links here. And essentially what we want to have happen when we're performing a page transition is anytime you click on one of these links, you want to animate out the current body of your page and then animate in the next body. Now it may not necessarily literally be the body element. So if I come to my layout file here, this is just in the root of my app directory. This is essentially just the base body element for the whole page. For your website, maybe you want to have a whole bunch of really fancy stuff. Maybe you want some kind of sliders that come in and out or something. You can totally follow along with what I'm doing here, but just replace some of the animations for that. But just to keep it simple for this, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create our own version of this link component but whenever it's clicked on, we're just gonna stop just for a second before we actually route someone to the next page. And we're gonna hook into this body element, animate it out, then change the page, then animate it back in. As mentioned, we aren't gonna use something like frame or motion or any other animation frameworks, at least not for my example. For this example, we're just gonna use good old JavaScript and CSS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I have a little utils folder that I've already created inside of which I'm going to create a new file. We can just call that transition link. I'm using TypeScript for my example. If you happen to not be using it, just ignore all of the TypeScript specific stuff. It sticks out like a sore thumb. I'll start by just creating a basic functional component like this. Since we're gonna be using some on clicks and stuff like that, I'm gonna to need to come up to the top here and add a use client. This is just gonna tell Next.js that this is a client component and not to try to render it on the server. And now we can start kind of making our own version of this link. So if I come over to my nav bar, I want it to be a drop in replacement for just the normal link component. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna replace my div here with a link and just make sure that that is imported. I'm going to need a couple of different props here that I'm gonna take in. First of all, will just be the children prop which will render inside of our link like this. After that is the href prop, which is going to obviously be passed to the href of our link like this. And I want this specifically to be a string. In my case, we'll see why in a second. And then any other additional props that the user happens to pass in, which are compatible with a link. Then I can just take those props and spread them directly onto my link like this. And of course we need to actually type our props given I'm using TypeScript here. So I'll come up to the top and I will import link props from next link. I can then define my interface for my props, which is just going to extend those link props. Need to make sure I actually import React node here for my children as well. And then we can just type our props like so. Now what we should be able to do is just take our link component here and replace whichever of these links we want with our transition link. So I'll say, let's just go with everything besides the logo at the top. Make sure that I actually import that. And now these four links, so the actual text links will perform some kind of transition, but just for you know the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna keep the logo as just a normal link that doesn't actually perform some kind of animation. Jumping back over to my link component, and I can actually close up these couple of components really quick. Let's just kind of think through one more time, hypothetically what we need to happen here. So this link is essentially just rendering an anchor tag with an href and whenever you click on it, and you can see when you just hover over it, if you look at the bottom, that this is just a normal link that's going to take us directly to another page. But we actually want to prevent this default behavior from happening until we have actually performed our animation. Now, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a onClick function directly on my link right here. So I'll say onClick. This function will take in an event like so. And if I just call event.preventDefault like this, it's going to, as I mentioned a second ago, prevent the default behavior of this element from actually occurring. So now if I come over to my navigation and I try to start 
start clicking on links, nothing is actually going to happen. That said, we do still have a normal link here, right? So I can right click and go open link a new tab, stuff like that. And now if I kind of scroll between my tabs, we will see that we still have that. That still works like a normal link. But what we're going to have to do is actually manually move someone to the next page. Now, I assume you may have already kind of put two and two together here, but we have access to our href right here. So it's pretty easy to just push the user to whatever the given path is. The way that I'm going to do this is using the use router hook from Next.js. So I just need to import use router from Next Navigation. And then right here at the top of my component, just instantiate my router. And then for the time being, after our event.prevent default, we can just say router.push. And we want to push directly to the given href. Now, if I come back over to my example, I should be back to actually being able to switch between each of these pages. To give myself a little bit more space here, I'm actually gonna extract all of this out into its own function. We'll call that something like handle transition. And this is actually going to be an asynchronous function. At a high level, why is just because I wanna be able to add some kind of sleep code that runs before this router push so that we can run our animation without pushing somebody to a new page prematurely. Don't forget to grab our TypeScript definitions for our event right here and add those in like this. And then make sure that I'm passing my function back to my on click and this should continue to work just the same. To quickly mock out essentially what we wanna do here, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of space and I'm gonna add a couple of little to-do notes to hopefully start nailing this in a little bit better, helping it make a little bit more sense. So first we want to run some animation and then we want to sleep for some time. That time can either be the same amount as this animation's time, or maybe you wanna wait a little bit longer. Afterwards, we actually want to perform this router push. More specifically, this top one is going to be an exit animation. And then after our router push, we want to add some kind of entrance animation back in. So run some kind of enter animation to actually add the next page back in. Now you could use some kind of animation library here if you wanted to, but for this example, I'm just gonna use some basic CSS transitions. Now, what I mean by that is I'm just gonna directly grab a reference to our body element and I'm going to toggle on and off a class name and I'm gonna make sure that my body element has transition set for whatever those classes are. And that's what's gonna give me my animation effect. So back over here in my globals.css file, I'm gonna add a new class, which I'm gonna call page transition. So that will be something like this. And we can animate really whatever we want here. So maybe we want to lower our opacity to 0%. Maybe we wanna change the background color to black. Maybe we wanna transform the page down on the Y axis a little bit, or maybe we even want to add a little bit of filter blur or something to make it look like it's you know moving fast. That's kind of a cool effect. Now, as I've mentioned, we're going to be applying this class to the body element. So we need to make sure that we actually define our transitions on our body element. So I'll just go ahead and open up my body tag. We're going to need to define our transition properties. And we have all four of these different properties that we want to transition. So transition property, opacity, background, transform, filter. We can also add our transition timing function. I'll just use ease in out for now. Now. And finally, we just need some kind of duration. I'm going to go with 500 milliseconds, but of course, adjust for however your animation looks. And really now it's as simple as just toggling on this class name. So I'm gonna come back over to my code here and just to kind of get these to-dos out of the way, we can start by just grabbing a reference to our body element. I'm just gonna use document.querySelector to grab my body element. And on our element here, we're going to have something called class list on top of which we're going to have an add function, which will just take whatever class we wanna add. In this case, our page transition. And after our router pushes to the new href, we'll just want to remove that same class. Now, obviously, Obviously, this is all going to happen really quickly, right? So if I start flipping between pages like this, that's not going to work just yet. Even though we're adding and removing our class, it's you know happening in a couple of milliseconds max. So we don't actually wait enough time to see our animation. And my simple little workaround for that is just creating a little sleep function that can be awaited using this async await syntax. So we're going to create a new function. I'm going to call it sleep. This is going to take in one argument. That argument is going to be the number of milliseconds we want to sleep for. That's going to be a number. This is going to return a promise, which does actually return anything, thus return new promise. Promise gives us a callback function with a resolve function in this case. So we can just set timeout and then make sure that we're waiting the given number of milliseconds after which we'll actually resolve our promise. And now we can take our little function right here and say, come right after my classless add here. And now we can essentially just tell our program here to sleep. So maybe we wanna wait 500 milliseconds after the page transition begins. And then maybe we wanna wait a little bit longer after the router push as well, just to make sure that everything on that page has loaded before we show everything. Now, if I go ahead and save that, 
that and go and start moving between all of my pages, we're gonna see now that we get this really nice clean page animation for all of our routes except the home route again. So if I click home, I just go directly to home. And that is because if we come back over to our nav bar component, we're not actually using our transition link around our logo. Now, this is another really nice reason for using an approach like this, as opposed to using something like animate presence and trying to get that to work. If you have ever heard of that with frame or motion, because now you can actually tell different links to have different animations. For instance, we could take our transition link here and, you know, pass in some other different callback functions or something, which could then be called to, you know, add different kinds of animations and things for your enter and exit animations here, as opposed to just always using the same class names. But for something like that, I'll totally let you take this and run with it. Try to extend this component and make whatever kind of cool animations you need for your website. If you need any inspiration, again, check out the link in my description. Hover.dev, it's a great resource for animations and interactions, specifically for React. Beyond that, if you got any use out of this video, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.